Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap and this video is pretty special because as far as I know, I'm the only one in the world right now with this insane gaming setup. So let me walk you through it and we'll start with the monitor, which is the Acer Predator X27 and it costs 2,200 pounds. 2,200 pounds for a 27 inch monitor. And that's because it has some of the most advanced specs of any gaming monitor. We're talking 4K, 144 hertz high refresh, G-Sync and HDR. And not just any old rubbish HDR, this is proper high dynamic range. This offers up to 1000 nits of brightness. I mean, 27 inches isn't the most immersive. I'm used to a 38 inch ultra wide, but there's nothing else out there except the PG27UQ from ASUS, which is essentially their version of this, that has this kind of spec. It's insane. Although personally, I can't wait for the ultra wide version of this, which hopefully will be coming early 2019. I mean, playing games like Forza Horizon 4 and Far Cry 5 in true HDR10 at 4K with high refresh rates and G-Sync, well, it's just incredible. Now, of course, it is true that most games on PC don't support HDR right now, but the list is growing. We've got games like Far Cry 5, Forza Horizon 4, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, FF15, and Hitman 2. So yes, while it is still quite niche on PC, we should see the library of HDR games expand even more as monitors that support proper high dynamic range like this do become a bit more mainstream. But of course, in order to game at 4K and get a high enough frame rate to take advantage of the refresh rate of this monitor, we're gonna need a pretty beefy rig. And that's exactly what we've got. Inside my Cooler Master H500P case, which I've slightly customized with a front mesh panel for better airflow, is the most powerful consumer graphics card on the market right now the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. It'll set you back a whopping 1,100 pounds. But if you want to guarantee at least 60 FPS at 4K, this is the card you need. Now, if you watched my review of the 2080 Ti, you'll know it is a decent step up over the GTX 10 series. It's about 30% faster than the 1080 Ti at 4K. But those tests were done in current games because we've still not really seen the full power of this thing as games supporting RTX features like ray tracing and DLSS are still to come. But I didn't just want the best graphics card for this build. I also wanted the best processor possible, which is why I waited for the brand new 9th generation Intel Core i9-9900K. That's an eight core, 16 thread chip, which easily overclocks to five gigahertz. With more cores, better cooling, and the potential for bigger overclocks, this is the ultimate gaming processor. More cores and more threads are great, but if you're using this for games, as you probably know, clock speed is really more important as there are not many games that support eight cores, let alone four cores. But at the same time, Intel kind of have the best of both worlds because we do easily get that five gigahertz, which is great for games. But at the same time, if you're multitasking, maybe you're streaming your game as you play it, or you're editing videos like me, I use Premiere Pro and edit 4K videos, these extra cores and threads will really come in handy. And my tests show in a range of Full HD, Quad HD, and 4K exports and warp stabilizer tests in Premiere Pro, the new chips are on average 19% faster than the previous gen i7-8700K. Not too shabby. So I've got the i9 in the ASUS ROG Maximus 11 Extreme Z390 motherboard, along with 32 gigs of Corsair RGB DDR4 2666 MHz RAM, a 1000 watt Corsair PSU, and for storage, a 512 gig Samsung 960 EVO M2 SSD, and a one terabyte Samsung 850 EVO SSD. So with all that, how does this rig and this monitor setup actually perform in games at 4K. Well, as you can see, it's pretty obvious that even with this beast of a setup, 4K really does just destroy your frame rate in games. If you drop a few settings here and there, you might just hit triple digits and start really taking advantage of the monitor's higher refresh rate. It is worth mentioning though, that to get the full 144 Hertz on the X27, you need to overclock it from the default 120 Hertz. However, doing this limits you to the YCBC R422 color format, rather than the much better RGB color format. So considering the frame rates we're getting, I'm leaving it at 120 Hertz with the better color. This is just a limit of the technology right now. 
Oh, and if you're interested how I'm doing all this lighting, how I've synced up the lighting of my Philips Hue light strips behind my desk, I've got another one over here, a couple of Philips Hue Go bulbs, as well as the RAM and the RGB strips in my PC, while well, I'm doing it all through the ASUS Aura Sync app on the desktop. The RGB fans in my PC are connected to the motherboard via an RGB header, and Aura Sync plays nice with my Philips Hugo lights, so it's really easy to sync all the lighting together. So I worked out that this PC setup with this monitor, all in, will cost you about £5,000. I mean, nearly half of that actually is the monitor itself. Considering the spec, and there is just nothing else out there except the ASUS equivalent, it is pretty insane. And playing games on this, albeit on a relatively small 27-inch monitor compared to some of the bigger ones I've been using recently, it's still insane. But yeah, £5,000 all in for the top-end i9 processor, the top-end Z390 ASUS Extreme motherboard, and of course that RTX 2080 Ti. I've never had a more powerful or more awesome gaming system ever. If you do like the look of this setup though, and you have more money than sense, and you fancy yourself a similar setup, I've put links to everything you need in the description below. So as I'm sure you can imagine, getting all this awesome tech together at the same time for this video was quite a lot of hard work, so I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, and you'd like me to make more setup videos, then make sure you click like and subscribe, and also tap that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next one. Let me know what you make of this setup in the comments below. Would you change anything? And what do you think of the Acer X27? Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.